So today we're going to look at discussion essays. So the aims, so we want to look at improving your band score here today. So understanding the question, planning your essay using a simple structure, paraphrasing, using linking expressions to develop your answer and also avoid common mistakes. So understanding the question, let's have a look at our question. So first thing, so read the question, and then you want to identify each part and underline keywords. So I'll just give you a second to read the question. And then we'll look at underlining. Okay, so what would you say are the key words in the question there? So just type in the chat box for me. What would you say are the key words? Large, yeah, large multinational corporations. Yeah. Okay, benefit multinational corporations. Okay. Economics, okay. Anything else? Developing countries, yeah. Two views, yeah. Harmful, okay, good. Benefits, good. So let's have a look. So, yeah, you got that. Benefit, economies, developing countries harmful and then obviously we've got to discuss both views and give your opinion so okay very good everyone's on the right page so we need to decide on a response so you have to have some ideas so you can respond so we've got benefits and then obviously some harmful now, what do you think are some of the benefits then? So just type in the chat box what you think are some of the benefits. So jobs, yeah, jobs, jobs, <laughs> yeah. Economic growth, yeah, good. Yeah, help to develop, yeah. Foreign investment, yeah, good, employment. Okay, good. Okay, very good. So, yeah, creates jobs. And obviously, because they go there, they'll offer higher salaries to the workers. So that's good. And what about the harmful aspects of this? And what about the harm they could do? Can you think of anything? Pollution, local economy, yeah, can damage the local economy. Yeah, disposing waste, yeah. Disrespectful of the environment, yeah, pollution. Dumping, yeah, loss of local business, so uh, good, yeah. Okay, bad effect on small companies, oh, very good. Some good ideas coming through. So yeah, threaten local businesses and obviously local businesses close. So those are some of the negative aspects of that. So when planning your answer, we'll have a look at a simple structure. So we've got our introduction. So what will we do with the introduction? What will we do with the question? What are we going to do here? Yeah, paraphrasing, paraphrase. Good, good, good. Okay. 
what can anyone tell me what the next part of the introduction is going to be? Then they say thesis, 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 okay, or outline statement, yeah, good, good. And then body A, so what are we going to have for the beginning? Topic sentence, yeah, good. And then we're going to explain. Ooh, Philbert, yeah, where you're ahead of me. Good. So in we'll explain what we're we going to do after that. Nilafar, yeah, examples. Yeah, good. So give examples. Okay, very good. And then we'll have our conclusion. So what will we do there? What are we going to do with both viewpoints? Restate, okay. Summarize, yeah, Neo, good, very good. And then what will we do? So we'll summarize both view, viewpoints. Okay, Takashi, yeah, Trang. So we will give our opinion. Okay, good, very good. So it looks like we've got some very good writers here. So just have a look at that outline for a second. Okay. So it's important that you have a plan. So especially when you're practicing, once you have a plan like this, you get much quicker when you're practicing. So we look at the introduction, we'll paraphrase the lead in, we look at voice, synonyms, word form, word order, okay? So some people believe that Anyone going to write something in there for me? Individuals. Well, have a look at that. It is often, okay, it's widely believed. Okay. Often said, good. So it's often argued. It is widely Accepted, no, okay, argued, yeah, good. Widely believed. So there's some good vocab coming up here, guys. Well done. It is commonly. Okay, suggested. Okay, very good. So let's have a look at the rest. Activities. So can you think of anything to change that for actions, operations, okay, work, good. So actions of, so we've got large, so think of a synonym, huge, okay, big. Good, gargantuan, okay, good. Huge, okay, so multinational. Okay, international, yeah. Global, and then corporations. Companies, okay, good. Benefit. So think of another word for benefit. Okay, have a positive influence on, but we could also say help, yeah, good. Sharon, yeah. Okay. 
and in countries, economies of developing regions, okay, nations, yeah, good, good, nations, okay. So, it's widely believed that multinational corporations are, so think of the word form now, so think of the word form. Okay, Philbert, yeah. Beneficial, yeah, yeah. Good. To economies of developing countries. So we'll go back to large multinationals. So I got a very sensitive mouse on this computer, so gave you the answer. So it's commonly suggested that companies which are multinational mostly benefit. Okay. So see if you can change that, economies of developing countries. Okay, economic development, okay. I think sky the development, okay. Countries with developing economies, okay. Good, everyone's on very similar lines here. So there's some good vocabulary coming through there. Very good. So we'll take this one. So other people have the opposite view and feel that. So can you think of what you would change that to? So think about using a connecting word. On the flip side, there may be a little bit informal there. However, while, yeah. So while, good. Others believe. Okay. Good. Just move my box a little bit there, that's it. That's it. That these companies so have a negative effect. Okay. Instead of doing harm, yeah, good. So are harmful. Okay, good. So we need our outline statement. My opinion, I believe. Now, can you remember what we said? So we'll use a nice linking expression here. Multinational companies have some harmful impacts. So what are we going to put in the gap? I believe that. So I think of the words you'll put in the gaps. Okay, good, Sky, yeah. Although, good. So what's gonna go in the next gap? Multinational companies have some harmful aspects, impacts. However, uh-huh, what else? Well, overall, they benefit the countries in which they do business. Okay, so we've got some nice synonyms in there. We've changed some of the word forms and we've got some nice linking words there, while, though, although, overall. Okay, good. So let's have a look at paragraph A. So we said create jobs, improved wages. So we need our topic sentence. So multinationals have a generally positive effect on the 
environment or economy, I should say. I can't see. That's it. Economies of developing countries. Now, we'll use a nice phrase there. A growing body of research suggests. Now, this is a general statement here, a growing body of research suggests. So the research could be coming from many different areas. So you need to be careful with uh, using uh, phrases such as a recent study has shown, because that's one body of evidence. You would have to refer to some kind of source of information. Here, this is just general, so we don't need to refer to any source at all. So, one key benefit is that, so we talked about creating jobs. International investment can help create job opportunities for local people, okay? And then, we're going to explain this, okay? So this can lead to, so what do you think it's going to lead to? So think of a nice phrase you could use. Think of a collocation. We've discussed collocations a lot in the classes. So think about collocations. This can lead to So Philbert says a, dis a decrease in unemployment. Okay. Reduce employment. Okay. An increase in wages, because we're talking about wages. Yeah. So we'll give an example. So taking Turkey as an example. And then employees of multinational companies earn around 15% more than local companies. Okay. So we've got some nice linking expressions there. So a growing body of research suggests one key benefit is this can lead to, and then taking Turkey as an example. So these are really good linking expressions. So it shows good control of language, good control of lexis. And then we have a look at our verb forms. We've got models. Okay, good. And then vocabulary. So we talked about a generally a positive effect. Okay, so positive effect, collocation, international investment, nice collocation, job opportunities, local people, and then local companies. So we've got a nice range there some good collocations so if an examiner saw this they would you know know that the user has a good level of language control here right so we said threatens local businesses local businesses close so However, so see if you can give me a topic sentence. I'll just move my box so I can see. So see if you can give me a topic sentence.
Okay, yeah, we've got on the other hand as well. It's also believed to do some harm. Now some drawbacks, okay. Might the national cause negative effects. Okay. Often argue that there are some drawbacks. Okay, so there are also some negative impacts which must be considered. Okay, some good topic sentences there. They're coming in fast, so I can't kind of read them out before they all change, but I can see them coming in. So there's some good topic sentences there. One important issue is that, so think about what we've got at the top. See if you can write me the next sentence. Okay. Nevertheless, an increase in one of these occurrences could cause many drawbacks, okay? Good. So have a look. One important is, issue is that. Yeah, Martha, local businesses are being, so that should be being rather than being, being threatened, yeah? Local businesses cannot thrive. International can threaten the local businesses. Okay, so Saloni there would be shut down rather than shut out, but good. Local businesses suffer, challenging for local businesses. Okay, so multinational companies can take customers from local companies. So we need to explain. This means that, so think about what would happen if customers leave, don't start going to custom, the local companies, what's going to happen? So Philbert, yeah, take customers away. So the result is what? Okay, Paula, the ladder will close. Okay, so expand on that a little bit. Multinational companies, I missed that, but never mind. Fast and furious today. Local businesses may have to shut down. Okay, good. Okay. So local businesses are likely to close down. Okay, good. So we'll give an example. For instance, right. See if you can think of an example. See if you can think of an example, yeah. So think of some big multinational companies. Just see if you can think of an example for me. McDonald's or McDeath, as I like to call them. Yeah, okay. Apple, national smartphone, yeah. Price competition, yeah. Walmart, yeah. <laughs> McDonaldization, I like that. <laughs> okay. Coca Cola. Yeah, good. So we've got global chains such as McDonald's and Coca-Cola. So what effect do you think they might have on local companies? Okay. Schwama versus hot dogs. Okay, I'd go for a schwama every time. Good. So, they have a much larger budget for advertising. Yeah. So, Saloni's got it in one. So, allowing them to increase the market share at the expense of local restaurants. Yeah, very good. Okay. 
All right. So we've got our linking expression. Z. However, one important issue is that this means that, for instance, and then such as, got our verb forms R, which must be considered modal, likely to close, and have allowing them to increase. So we've got a good range going on again, and good vocabulary. So global chains, again, collocation, larger budget, market share. So again, we've got a very good range of vocabulary here showing good control and accuracy and a good awareness of collocations, obviously. So that's very good. And then miss the last one, the expense of. So at the expense of. So this is a good expression to use as well, at the expense of someone or something. Right. So we've got our body paragraphs. So we'll have a look at the conclusion. So we'll summarize both views and main points. So in conclusion, right. So Based on what we've done, obviously you're going to have to use your memory. So do you think anyone can summarize those points for me? So, Phil, but yeah, there's a number of different uh, transitions you can use so in conclusion to sum up in summary, in sum. In a nutshell, Angira is a little bit too informal. Yeah. To conclude, that's fine. So think about how you're going to summarize both of those views there. Mm, not really to verdict. Yeah. Okay. Mm, as a, I think you're better just sticking to the ones that are, you know, used most often in summary to summarize to sum up. Yeah. Okay, while, mm -hmm. multinational countries are so-called double-edged swords. Uh, Takashimi, yeah, double-edged swords, they can work. You've just got to be careful with using idiomatic language so you don't use them incorrectly. Multinational company take advantage of every moment to decrease in local industries. Okay. Let's have a look. So while multinationals can benefit developing countries through creating jobs, they can also, so see if you can finish that off. They can also Okay, there's one paravia, paravia, but there are also bad effects which cannot be ignored. Okay, good. The benefit of having multinational companies in terms increase the country of the economy. Okay, good. Reduce market share of local companies can also harm local companies. Good. Okay, some good examples. Well done. Okay, so they're threat and small businesses. So now I'm going to give my opinion. So in my opinion, so think about your own opinion based on what we've discussed. Given unhealthy activities, multinational companies have a positive and negative effects. Okay. Wafer local instead of small is fine. Should be a balance between multi 
national companies and local businesses. Yeah. Motivate local businesses and encourage investment properly. Okay. Can have a dual effect. Okay. Government needs to control. Okay, let's have a look. So despite having some negative effects, I believe multinational corporations are generally beneficial. Okay. So got a clear transition signal in conclusion. So just remember when you're writing, you need to make sure you do have a transition signal to show clearly that it is your conclusion. Okay. And then we've got the opinion at the end there. Okay. So that is basically your discuss both views essay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Stephen, for that presentation. Uh, that was really, really helpful. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for giving your answers and suggesting some really good vocabulary there. So well done. I um, hope you found that useful. Now, we had a lot of different questions from you in the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, sorry, Neil Afar, I, I can see you say you can't hear me. Can you hear me okay now? Uh, am I coming, coming through? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me okay, Stephen? Yeah, I can hear you. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So hopefully, yeah, you, you guys can all hear me just now. That's great. So, ah, oh, excellent. Thank you for that feedback, Inna. That's, that's great to hear. I'm glad you enjoyed the session. So well done. Um, guys, we will have some time now to look at some of your questions. So if you do have any questions about Discuss Both Views essays or any general questions about IELTS, feel free to add them to the Q&A box and we'll have some time to discuss them just now, okay? While you're writing up your uh, questions to the box, I have just put some links in the chat to our premium services, which I'll uh, talk to you a little bit about now. Uh, we offer on our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com, a writing evaluation service. So if you're interested in having a qualified examiner read through your essay or your task one report, you can submit it onto our website. One of our team uh, will go through, read through your writing, and give you very detailed feedback on your band score, your strengths and weaknesses, any grammar mistakes that you're making, and what you can do to improve your band score. Um, so that's a service we offer on our website for writing. We offer a similar service for speaking as well, where you can book a mock speaking test with an examiner. We'll go through the full test with you, and then afterwards we'll explain uh, how you can improve your score, any mistakes that you're making, and we can give you an estimated score as well. Um, you can find out all the details uh, via the link on our website, uh, Paramir. So uh, all the details are on there. Take a look. Hopefully it will be of interest to you. Um, if you're interested in improving your reading and listening, we also have a series of video lessons on our website too, where we talk about different strategies you can use for the listening and reading test how you can approach different question types and tips that can help you as well. So um, we offer different things on our site. The links are in the chat there. Please check it out. Okay, so that's uh, enough uh, about that. I think we can dive in to some of your questions. And a lot of you were asking about this uh, examples and statistics that you can use. So I think this was in body paragraph one when we were yeah. talking about Turkey and we gave a very specific example. Um, so many of you have questions like, can we use made up examples? 
if I don't know accurate data, what could I, what should I do? Can we invent statistics? Um, this kind of thing. So Stephen, what's your view there on, you know, do we, is it okay to invent uh, statistics, first of all? Yeah, I mean, the examiner's not going to cross, they, they, they're just marking your essays. They have, they're, they're not marking, but rating, so they haven't got time. The only thing I would say is, like I said before, where we had a, the, uh, we mentioned there's a growing body of evidence that suggests that. Mm. So we're talking in generalized terms there. Whereas if you say a recent study has shown, you have to be a bit careful with that because you would have to reference where that information came from. Like a recent study by Cambridge University has shown, uh, you know, no one's going to check that out. You know, the examiners are just there to correct your, um, not correct, I keep saying correct, rate. They're there to rate your response to the question. So, but you know, a lot of people overuse a recent study has shown, or a recent survey has shown, well, you know, the examiner knows that's going to be made up. So, but it may not detract from the score depending on how you actually have responded to the question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd agree with that. I think um, you don't you don't need to worry about using accurate statistics um, as long as you're using as long as it supports your overall argument. I think yeah. it, should, it should be fine. Yeah. Um, let's see a question for from Nilofar here. Uh, it's a good one. Should we have more reasons for the side of the argument that we aim to support? So in this kind of discuss both views essay, yeah. Um, I think you, you just have to have a balanced approach to it, really. Um, you don't want an extremely long body paragraph than an extremely short paragraph. It's just got to look balanced, really. I mean, in real terms, away from the IELTS test, then that may be perfectly okay. But for the sake of, two, let's say, 280 words, I would just have a balanced approach, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I would agree with that. I think for other types of question, for example, agree, disagree, you know, if you're agreeing and you're planning to support the view of agreeing, then it's probably a good idea to have more reasons why you agree. But for discuss both views, uh, as you said, Stephen, I, I think it's, it's fine to have a balance. Discuss view A, discuss view B, which one do you agree with? And then you're, you're fully answering the, the question there. Excellent. Um, guys, I can see um, some of you are asking questions in the chat. Um, if you could write your questions into the Q&A box, uh, we'll discuss the questions in there first. Okay, so copy over any questions you have to the Q&A and we'll do our best to get around to them. Um, I can see Anonymous is asking, can I, uh, I arrived late, can I get the online class from somewhere? Uh, Anonymous, the video will be up on our YouTube channel, uh, it should be up tomorrow. So I've put the link to the chat, uh, I've put a link to that in the chat. You'll be able to find that uh, on our YouTube channel from tomorrow. Okay, let's see. We've got a question here from Dwi. Uh, Dwi is asking, how far can we explain our opinion? Is it better to completely agree to one side or both? And so that's the first, yeah, there's a couple of questions here, but that's mm. the first part, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, your opinion is entirely up to you. Um, there is another school of thought with this type of essay where you would add another paragraph for your opinion but in real terms your essay is probably going to be very very long and you may not have time to complete it so i think if you're outlining your opinion in the uh, introduction and in the conclusion um you know that should be good enough really yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Definitely. It's, uh, 
as long as your opinion's clear in the intro and the conclusion, it's fine. Uh, your question about, is it better to completely agree with one side or both? Mm, doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Um, I would possibly say it's, it's a bit easier to say that you completely agree with one mm -hmm. side. Um, just the type of structure you'll need to use to say, well, I partially agree with this because, but I also agree with this because it's a little bit more complicated than just saying, I completely agree with this point of view. Um, and because you're still answering the question, maybe it's better just to go for the simpler option, even if in reality, you actually partially agree with both sides. Often, you know, there's not a clear cut uh, yes or no answer, but it's just easier to pretend <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think also a lot of students think going down the middle is going to be easier to write, but then they don't fully cover one side. So yeah. it's like you say, it's better to have a clearer opinion, I think. I think so. I think so. Great. Uh, let's see a question here from Hayat. Uh, Hayat's asking, after I finished writing, how can I make any alterations or edits to my essay? Um, well, just make sure that on the day of the test, if there are alterations that they're highlighted correctly. So make sure you scribble out, put a you know, a little arrow or whatever that, whatever it is you do, but just make sure you highlight, you know, where the alterations have been. So you can just scribble out and put the word above, that's okay. Or you can just, you know, put little, little indicators of a missing word, or for example, if it's a preposition on, in, or maybe an article, at, the, something, you know, just add it, then the examiner will know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And just to add to that, if you take the computer delivered test, then it won't be an issue. You can just delete uh, and retype. So it's easier in a way to make changes to your writing. Um, so that's why I personally, if it was an option, I would probably choose to take the computer delivered just because I really like being able to type rather than writing with handwriting but it's a personal preference i think so. yeah i'm interested to see how many people have actually taken that computer-based test obviously in september people are not going to have a choice but yeah yeah is, is that the case they won't have a choice in september it, come september it's all going to be computerized i think by well this september so um, yeah. I think by the end of this month, I know they're trying to do that in China anyhow, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be a broad right across the board. Okay, okay, there you go. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that, that might be something to start thinking about to be practicing uh, your typing yeah. rather than handwriting. Yep. Uh, let's see a couple of questions. Um, Kushik, yep, we have a speaking webinar later this month. If you check out the link in the chat, uh, live lessons on our website, you'll be able to see the full details of that. Uh, we have a question from Ekaterina. Uh, you, you can watch the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel, and the link to that is also in the chat as well. Um, we've got a question here from Marwais. Uh, Marwais is asking about writing a topic sentence. How can we write a good topic sentence? Um, well, I think you have to remember, you, there's two parts of a topic sentence. So you've got the main topic. So, um, for example, riding a bicycle well, let me give you a topic sentence. Riding a bicycle in Beijing can be dangerous. So the topic obviously is riding a bicycle in Beijing and the controlling idea is can be dangerous. So what you have to remember is that all of your ideas for that paragraph have to go back to how or why it's dangerous to ride a bicycle in Beijing. So I think, you know, be clear about what the topic is. So for example, if I say American food is tasteless and greasy. Now, I don't believe that, but it's just an example. So <laughs> maybe. 
so American food is the topic. Tasteless and greasy is the controlling idea. So all your ideas have to go back to what we call a controlling idea. So when you're writing a topic sentence, remember the two parts. And then it's easy to write a coherent paragraph if you remember the controlling idea. Ask yourself how or why to get your supporting ideas. And you, sh you know, with practice, you should be able to do it well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'd agree. And I think it, it can really help when you're planning your essay. It's basically your overall response to the question. It's like, how would I, in one sentence, uh, summarize the, my response? And then that is essentially your controlling idea for one of your paragraphs. And then the rest of the paragraph flows from that idea. So, um, yeah, you can you can check out how we've formed the topic sentence from uh, from our controlling ideas in this paragraph. So, um, a question here from Dio. Uh, Dio is asking, can we use idioms in writing, uh, idiomatic language in writing? Um. <clears throat> You can, but I think what the, a lot of the common idioms that people see or that they're familiar with would not often be appropriate. And I, I would go along the lines of using a good range of vocabulary with collocations rather than idiomatic language. So, I mean, collocations are still idiomatic language, really, but idiomatic in the terms of idioms like double-edged sword, uh, you know, every coin has two sides. They're often overused and often they're not used accurately. Yeah, so I would avoid them. You know, have a look at the academic collocation list on the internet. Have a look at some good collocations to use with the topics. Um, mm. You know, you don't, you know, really you just want to be trying to do the best you can when you do the test and get the best score you can you don't want to lose marks by you know mm. have, making a lot of errors with the idiomatic language i think yeah yeah i would, I would agree i think idioms are more suited for speaking um even then you should be careful about when you use them it would be easy to use them inappropriately saying that um mena is asking can you give us an example of using double-edged weapon as an idiom and yeah I'm thinking about part three of the speaking test you know they yeah. might they could ask you you know what do you think about multinational corporations you know do you think they're beneficial or harmful and you know you could say well i think multinational corporations are a double-edged sword on the one hand they have some benefits blah 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 on the other hand, they have some drawbacks, such as blah, blah, blah. And in that case, that would be a natural way of using that as an idiom. And it's still, it's fairly informal. So it would be fine for speaking. For the writing, it's not a very academic style. So better to keep them for speaking. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's see, quick question here from Arindam. Uh, they say, I'm unable to pay for the super PDF reading pack. What can I do? Uh, Arindam, you can still access almost all of those documents via our website. They're just not collected together. So you can have a look through our website. You'll be able to practice um, and to see a lot of those example answers as well. That's on IELTSonlinetest.com. <clears throat> okay. Um, Saloni, yes, you can submit both essays for the writing evaluation, both for task one and task two. And the details of that are on our website as well. I'll put the link in the chat. Um, Sky, I hope you're still with us. Uh, we're, we've got time for your question as well. Um, Sky's question is, have we included too few reasons for benefits and drawbacks, or is it okay just to include one or two points for each side of the discussion? Yeah, I, I think that's fine, really. I think, you know, the, the, 
there's no problem with that really. Um, you know, one or two points is going to be suitable. Otherwise, you're, going, you're just going to be going on and on and on and on. Remember, you're going to be under time pressure on the day as well. So, you know, that that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see a question about the computer-based test from Nithu. Um, do we get the same amount of time as the paper-based test? Yeah the same amount of time so there's no difference to my knowledge anyhow to former mm -hmm. colleagues that i've spoken to it's exactly the same except it's on the computer so it's the same amount of time yeah the one change that i'm aware of is in the listening test where you don't have three minutes sorry you don't have the 10 minutes to transfer your answer it's for the computer delivered test you have, I think, about three minutes at the end. But because you don't need to transfer your answer in the computer delivered test, it's all recorded on the computer. So you have three minutes just to check over your answers at the end rather than 10 minutes to transfer your answer. Other than that, everything is the same. Okay, uh, let's see. We have time for a few more of your questions. Um, guys, if we, we do have a lot of questions today, so I'm sorry if we don't get round to your one. Just to say you can you know, get in touch with us via our YouTube channel, uh, via our Facebook as well. If you want to send us in questions or add them as comments on our videos, we do go through them and we'll respond to you uh, on that format as well, okay? So, um, but we'll do our best to get through a few more of these uh, today. So let's see, we have um, a question about, uh, this is a, good, a couple of questions about vocabulary here. One is, is it better to use language you're familiar with? And another question is, what can we recommend for people who want to develop their vocabulary? Mm. I think for both speaking and writing, it's better to use language that you're 100% familiar with rather than trying to use vocabulary that you may not be sure how to use. Um, to, um, the one thing you can do, as I mentioned earlier, have a look on the internet and Google uh, uh, academic collocation uh, list so that'll give you a good list of collocations and you also have the academic word list so what i would do is have a look at topics you find particularly difficult because usually some people are weak with some topics compared to others for example you might have a lot of ideas and vocab for environments but for social issues you may not so have a look and just develop your vocabulary like that. Uh, and reading, you know, reading is a great way to develop your vocabulary and develop ideas for what you're going to put in your essays. So reading newspapers about current events, um, you know, not only are you improving your vocabulary, but you're improving your reading skills as well. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, I would, I would agree with that one. That would also answer um, one of your questions about what to do if I don't have any idea about the topic. And I would say that, as you said, Stephen, doing more reading uh, to broaden your general knowledge, your understanding of different current affairs, that can really help you just to get some basic ideas about uh, any a range of common topics in IELTS. Uh, remember, you don't need any specialist knowledge as well. You just need to give an opinion and be able to give a couple of reasons for that opinion. Um, so don't worry if you don't know specific statistics or data. You really don't need to know that. You can invent them um, if you want to support your point of view. Okay, um, let's see. A uh, question from Irina, um, is it enough to give our opinion just in the conclusion? Uh, well, in the case of this essay, I think it's better to have your clear opinion. So in my opinion, and then 
you know, a clear opinion in the, uh, the conclusion as well. Mm. So I would put it in both places and then you, you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree. And I think, Pachu, that uh, kind of answers your question as well. How many ideas are suitable for a body paragraph? So for each body paragraph, how many ideas should we aim to include? You know, yeah, I mean, two, one, two good ideas with a clear explanation and an example, then you should be fine. You know, any more than that, and then you're going to be really going into a great length and more detail than you need for, uh, you know, writing task two. So, I mean, in general, you're probably looking around, probably, well, depends on how good a writer you are, but you'd be looking at probably around 270 to 80 words, I guess. So, you know, remember that you've got to complete that or it's recommended you complete that within 40 minutes. So, you know, you don't want to be spending too much time on things. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Right, guys, I'm afraid we are going to have to wrap up there. That's about all we've got time for today. Um, just, Stephen, before we go, could you um, pop back to the next, uh, to the previous slide, just so we... Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the whole essay. Ah, so, I think we've only got the conclusion. Okay, okay. Uh, that's something we can improve for next time. Don't worry, we'll make sure it's all on the same uh, page uh, for, next, for the next session. But uh, yeah, for just to summarize, today's uh, answer was a band nine. Uh, there were about 260 words. Um, the recording for the session will be available on our YouTube channel. So you can watch back uh, the whole uh, lesson and you'll be able to see the model answer and how we uh, arrived at that. So hope that's been helpful for you. Um, a big thank you to Stephen for presenting today. So Thanks, guys. Well done. Some good uh, examples coming through from everyone. So that's good. Excellent. Yeah. And thank you for fielding so many questions there, Stephen. Um, we, as I said, uh, if you do have additional questions you'd like, feel free to get in touch via our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. If you can give us a like, a share, a subscribe, uh, that would be fantastic. It helps us to continue offering these webinars for free. So thank you very much. Uh, it's been great to see you all. And we hope to see you again for another session soon. Cheers, guys. Bye, everyone. Thanks again, Stephen. Yeah. Cheers. Cool. Bye. Bye, guys. See you soon.